Hi folks, what I'd like to talk about today is uh, proper soldering tip care and maintenance. I'd like to go through some of the steps required to keep a soldering tip in good shape and basically some of the things that's, that are happening in the soldering process just so you understand what's going on with this. Alright, first of all uh, we're talking about soft soldering. This is primarily related to circuit boards or wiring but it could apply to anything else. It could apply to stained glass. It could apply to uh, if you were soldering a copper roof on your house. So it's any type of what we refer to as soft soldering. So soft soldering is soldering that occurs or the joining of two metals with a filler metal, in this case solder, that melt under 850 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, when we talk about brazing or welding, we're working at much, much higher temperatures. All right, so, and so what we're doing then in the soldering process is the tin in the solder, so it's typically a tin lead solder or a lead free solder. Uh, we're actually penetrating, we're heating up the base metal, we're heating up the materials. That solder is melting, and the tin in the solder is penetrating the copper base metal. So we call that an intermetallic bond. Now what we need to do is, the objective is, we need to heat that solder joint approximately 100 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit above the melting temperature of the solder. And we're, we're looking to do this in a very short period of time. So on a circuit board we're talking about one second plus or minus a quarter of a second for tin lead solder. And for lead-free solder, we're trying to do that in about two to three seconds max. All right, so in order for you to accomplish all those things, we need to have a clean soldering tip that accepts solder really well. So let's talk about how a soldering tip is made briefly, just so you understand what we're trying to do here. All right, so a, copper, a, tip, a soldering tip is made out of copper. So basically a rod of copper is machined to the desired configuration. In this case, this is a large example of a tip. Um, this is a chisel shape, sometimes referred to as a screwdriver tip. So it's copper that's machined. And then what we do is we iron plate the tip, the entire tip. And as I mentioned, since that copper is dissolving, when we add solder to the tip, so in other words, if you had a plain copper tip and you kept adding solder to it, it would ultimately erode and dissolve. So in that case, you'd have to have a file to keep reshaping the tip to maintain the tip configuration. All right, so since we don't want that to happen, we iron plate the tip, and that increases the life of the plain copper tip by 20 to 30 times. So that's the reason for the iron plating. The bad thing about iron plating is it doesn't transfer heat as well as plain copper does. But, so there's the trade-off between transferring heat easily and tip life. So it's a good compromise uh, between those two things. Alright, so then, as I said, the iron plating is put on. Then the working surface of the tip is masked off. This is the part of the tip that we're going to use to solder with. This is masked off with a, like a plastic coating. And then the tip is nickel plated and then it's chrome plated. The chrome plating is there so that the solder doesn't creep up the tip because the solder always wants to flow toward the heat source. All right, so that's basically, and then also after that, after the chrome plating, the mask is removed and then the tip is dipped in a solder pot, a molten solder pot so that there's a good coating of solder on the end of the tip. And that's basically how a tip is made. So what's critical is that we always have a solderable surface to solder with. As the, as the iron, since the iron is, is hot, the tip is hot, oxides, heavy oxides form on the working surface of the tip. We cannot transfer heat through those oxides. So therefore we have to keep the tip very clean. All right, and we always need to keep a coating of solder on the end of the tip.
in order for us to be able to transfer heat effectively. So I have this soldering iron on. So when we solder, the first thing we do is we wipe the tip off and then we add a light coating of a very, very fine coating of solder on the tip. We just add a very, very small amount and then we go right to the circuit board or whatever it is that, whatever it is that we're soldering and we complete the solder connection. And then we remove the iron and then the best way is to add a little bit of solder on the end of the tip and then we put the iron back in the holder. All right. Now, if we, what we never want to do, and this is very important, it sounds simple, but it's very important. What we never want to do is to wipe the tip off and put the iron back in the holder. All right. We never want to do that. We always want to have a coating of solder on the end of the tip. Like that. And then you could put it in the holder. Now, I recommend sponges that have a hole in the center or holes in it so that when we wipe the tip, the excess solder drops into the tray. Also, you want to have a wet sponge, relatively wet. Uh, I could say a damp sponge, but we don't want the sponge to scorch when we rub the hot iron over it. Also, all we need is, if we do everything properly, all we need is a quick wipe like that. You don't want to sit there with the, you know, with the iron and the sponge. Just a quick wipe should take all the solder off. And that's what we're after. Also, the soldering sponge should be made for soldering because these have a very low sulfur content. Uh, that's what makes them different. The low sulfur content, it's only about a few parts per million of sulfur. If you use a regular high temperature sponge, it might have a lot of sulfur in it and that de-wets the tip. So it prevents, as you use it, the tip becomes more and more oxidized and it's very difficult for the flux that's in the solder to clean those oxides off. So whether you have a cord solder with, with flux inside it or whether you use an external flux, the same thing happens. You want, you want, you want that flux to be active enough to remove those oxides. Okay, uh, so we always have to keep the tip well tinned and here's another product that, that some people use. It's called a tip tinner. So this is basically um, tin with ammonium phosphate, so which is a very, very active flux. Now the reason I don't recommend this, especially for circuit board soldering, is that as you put the iron in here to retin it and then wipe it on the sponge, you could carry some of that contamination from this tip tenner back onto the board. And that's the reason I don't recommend this. If you follow the procedure I talked about and keep a good coating of solder on the tip, you shouldn't even need, you should never need this. All right, now, if the, if the soldering iron tip does become oxidized and gets that black coating on it, don't solder with it because you're not going to be able to transfer heat and then you're going to end up spending too much time on the solder connection or you're going to try to try to rub the tip on the connection to get it to transfer heat. All those things can damage the board or wiring or whatever assembly you're working on. So the only way to do this is we take the tip, we wipe it off completely, we get all the solder off then we turn the tip, turn the iron off, or unplug the iron, whichever type of iron you're using, and you let that reach room temperature by itself. You don't want to quench it on the sponge because you could damage the plating. All right, so then after it reaches room temperature, we want to take the tip and use a very fine bristle brass brush. It's got to be brass. Don't use a steel brush because you can wear through the plating. So we want to just use the brass brush, brush it, get those oxides off, and then clean the tip. You can also use, you know, again, the tip is going to be at room temperature. So you can also use a white Scotch-Brite pad. 
this is the lowest abrasive scotch Brite there is. So you'd use a white one of these, or you can also use crocus cloth that you can buy at a hardware store. It's just a very, very fine abrasive. Or you can use, this is 2000 grit sandpaper. This I got at an auto, auto parts store, auto supply store. So it's a very, very fine sandpaper. So whichever method you use to get that tip clean, you clean it off, then you wipe it off with a rag, or better yet, with a little alcohol. You make sure there's no residue on here. And then you can either wrap solder around the tip, or you can just turn the iron on or plug the iron back in. And as soon as the tip reaches solder melt temperature, you would apply solder to it. So in this case, I have solder that has flux in it. So I would wash the tip or, or um, uh, add solder to the tip so that that flux cleans whatever oxides are going to start to form immediately. So you want to add the solder as soon as possible. As soon as it melts it, you want to flush the tip with solder. And then your tip is in good shape again, and you can use it effectively. So again, you want to keep a good coating of solder on the tip at all times. Again, I can't stress that enough. It's very important. It makes the difference between damaging something or making a good solder joint. So I hope this video has helped, and please feel free to contact me if I can help with anything else. Thank you very much.